So my name is uh, Tom Wickham Jones and I want to talk today about some future directions in working with data in, in Mathematica. So these are things that are not part of version 9. These, these are future, future directions. So really there's, there's two key concepts that, that I want to talk about. So first one is, is a thing called data array. So this is more like a sort of general data structure for Mathematica. And the second is a thing called data store, which is a way to work with tabular, relational, and document-oriented data. So they're like related, but, but, but not, not, not really the same thing. So let's just sort of kick out. And so first of all, I'll uh, start out looking at, at data array. So really, what data array is, is a, it's a basic expression, which has its syntax with this sort of angle bracket thing here. So it's really an associative array, like, like a map in, uh, that's, that's useful in Mathematica. So I can construct one. Yeah, sure. Right, how about that? Right. So, so I enter it with you know, a set of rules. So there's like a key and a value pair, and that's, that's, that's how it's created. And I can extract the values, so I can ask for the value of the, um, you know, key one. So key one's four, and I get four back. And it has a full form data array. And I can, if, if I ask to do part, then the part is just going to work on the, the actual full form of, of the thing that, that, that I see here. So, you know, here are some more features. I can nest, nest these things. So I've got a data array that's nested as a value of a, of, of, of a key, and I can pull it out um, with repeated function application. And, and the keys can be anything. You know, they don't have to be strings. So, so here I've got a key that's, that's like some sort of compound expression. So the whole thing is, is orderless. So it doesn't matter, doesn't matter which way you, which way you enter things, it's, it's all the same. Um, and it's orderless in the sense of pattern matching. So here I've written a, f a function in Mathematica, and I want to say, I want this to match any data array that has a key one and a key three, and I, and I couldn't care less about any of the rest of it. And, and that's, that's what it'll do. And so if you remember the D1 has, has key one and key three, it also has key two, but, but it matches this, uh, matches. Um, so you can't use, so I pull this thing out here, so I, you know, this is an error because there's no, there's no key that's, that's the number two, um, but if I want to work with in part, I can use the keys in part if it's a data array by using this sort of key um, syntax like that. So that p picks out the data array value for the key F3, and that's, that's four. Um, so here are some things, so iterations, they work on the sort of full form of the thing, so it's iterating over the rules, so this is a map that's going to apply the function f to at level 2, so, so I do that and you know that's, that's what it's done, or this is the same sort of thing working on the atoms coming, coming back up in the sort of nested thing here. Um, and, and such like. Now, now working with this, of course, you might get an error because here I'm mapping at the top level and I'm going to make a data array where the entries aren't, aren't ruled. So that's, that's kind of like an error. Um, we can add to and modify the data with, uh, so here I've got a symbol. This is a typical way in Mathematica of using a symbol. It's kind of like a reference um, object. So I'm doing, you know, D. So I'm, I'm adding a new entry and then sort of D is, uh, now I've added a key 8. And um, here's kind of like a key thing. So the data array is like everything else in Mathematica. It's, it's immutable. So I've got D1 equals D. And I, add, I change the key 1 value. So, so D, that's changed. But, you know, D1, it, it, it hasn't changed. So that's, that's it's immutable. So it's a useful sort of property. Um, we're working on, I'm, I'm not going to demo this now, but a very efficient storage. So, so when, when things are immutable, you have to have special techniques. Otherwise, it's, it's very expensive when, when there are like millions of, of entries. And so we have a special data structure technique for, for making this very efficient. Um, now, here's an interesting thing. So, yes? How would you delete something? 
Well, you, you'd use the delete function to, to, to delete something. So that's. Um, here's a. So the, these data arrays, it, it's a data structure, and in some senses, it's quite similar to a JavaScript object. Now, may, may, maybe none of you really know what you know, I'm, I mean by that, but it has some interesting opportunities for sort of object orientation, and I'll give a demonstration of this. So here, I've got, I've written a couple of functions, so I've written a, a function that's kind of like an iterator. So this is a thing that's going to move the iterator further forward, and it's taking a, a data array where the data is, is a list, and um, here is one, an iterator where I say whether there is a, another element. So a little bit of code there, but, and then I've got like a, a fold that's written in terms of this iterator, and that just works in terms of these abstract functions, iterator has next, and iterator next, and it sort of moves, it's iterating over the thing, applying a, a, a function to the, um, to an accumulator in, in the way that fold does. So here I'm going to construct an iterator where the data is, is a list, and I can do things here. So this one here is, you know, prepend reversing the elements. And here I can do a kind of like a sort of, you know, I'm accumulating the sum of the, the elements. Now what's interesting is I can take the same thing and the same iterator fold, and I can have, here's, here's another iterator where the data is, is a string. But the iterator fold, and here I'm, I'm creating one, but I can use the same, the same implementation of iterator fold, and so here, what it's doing is it's reversing the strings. So that's, there's like some sort of um, abstraction there, and, and this is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, it, it's the, the interface to this thing is through these, the, these, these abstract functions. So I could have other types of iterators for doing things on files or, or such like. So that's, this, this is a, a possible way to, 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 to do in, interesting things. I'll, I'll take questions at the end, actually, because there's, there's a lot to go through. So, um, right. So that's, that's the idea of data array, is it's, a, it's kind of like a data structure, and it, it has some interesting new features to, to enhance uh, mathematical programming. So now I want to move forwards and talk about another new concept, that's kind of related, um, and this is a thing called the data store. And this is a way to work with relational, tabular, hierarchical data. So the idea is it's not, it's not a database technology, but it can use a database technology. And, and it could work, say, with SQL databases, but it could also work with, now in, in the modern world, people start to think about non-relational non data, like, like hierarchical data or <coughs> document structured data. And it also has some opportunity to abstract out a set of commands so that we could have out of memory uh, file processing if we have large amounts of data. So let's have a look at this. Um, so I can just uh, create the data store. So it just I'm giving a list of rules, and if we look at this in a grid, we get some idea. So the idea is this is, this is rectangular data, and each, each column has, has kind of a name. So it's, it's like relational data. Each row is embodying a relation that's, that's labeled by, the, um, by the, the, the name of the column. So I can do this, and so then I can, a little bit similar to data array, I can extract, say, the first extract the first row, well here I can extract the first row and I'm giving the name of a column, so that's, that's pulling out, so that's the second, second row. And the normal of a data array is a, a data store is a list of data arrays. So, let's look a little bit more at this. So here I can do something like a select command. So what I'm going to do now is select all rows for which the volume is equal to 30 and the result is a data store itself, and so I can put that into a, a, a grid. Um, or here I'm picking out just, just what columns I, I want the result to come out in. Here's, here's another one where I've got some type of, uh, made a data store. So here's the data store, and I've got some dates in it, and here I'm going to say select all the elements of this data store for which the date entry is greater than 
this, this thing here. And here's another concept that I think we nearly added in version 9, but having some sort of date object, and then we could have, like, say, do, do more, more useful things. Like, like that's, that's definitely a, a convenient way to write a, a, a comparison. So now I've picked out, you know, it's, it's eliminated, you know, the, the 2nd of November type of thing, or, or I could, you know, do, do that sort of thing. So, now, let's, let's try and think about some sort of computation with, with such a thing. So here I've, I've created a data array, a, a data store, and this data store, it has, you know, two columns, there's age and, and height. So let's do some things with this. So I can pass it into list plot, and so list plot, you know, well, it knows what to do with it, and it adds labels to the, um, to the axes. Um, here I can just do a little bit of, uh, here I'm going to do like a mean, and I'm telling mean to, um, I want to do, calculate the mean of a particular column in the, in the height table. Now in this, of course, you know, it, I'm, I'm giving a lot of freedom as to how it actually does the calculation, and, and we can see, a, a bit later I'll, you'll see why that, that might be useful. Here I'm doing another type of computation is to change um, some of the rows in, 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 in some sort of way. So here I want to do a data store map, and I'm saying I want, the, I want to change the height, going back to this guy here, I want to change the height, you know, to um, just to rind the old height. And so now they're, they're all integers. Well here, I'm doing a data store map, but I'm introducing a new, introducing a new column. So, so double didn't exist before, but now I've introduced um, a double, you know, a, a new column. So that's, 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 that's all kind of useful. Um, here's another function that's, that's, so I call this a data store fold, and what this does is it works on sort of segments of the data. So basically it's a bit like fold, so what I'm doing is I'm adding up, basically I'm adding up all the the height, all, all, all the elements of the, the height column. Um, well here I'm going to add up, compute the, um, the sum of the height column and the sum of the squares of the height column. Now what's kind of interesting about the way this is written is here I'm putting a print statement in and this sh is showing that it's actually, it, it's, it's doing this sort of incrementally so it, it's, it's just adding part of this at a time. And so that's that's actually can be quite advantageous um, computationally, and, and, and later we'll see why, why, you know, why, why that gets even more advantageous. And here's another function that sort of fits into this, and this is a, a MapReduce function. So not everybody's heard of MapReduce, so it, it's, it, it's probably not the right name because the map is not the same meaning as the map in Mathematica and the reduce is not the same meaning as the reduce in Mathematica. But basically it produces a map, you know, a key value binding things and then you reduce it. And that's, that's a powerful concept that's used in, in a lot of, um, um, you know, there's this thing called Hadoop that, that, that is essentially a map reduce function. It, Map, map reduce is also quite similar to the SQL group by functionality if, if, if people are familiar with, uh, familiar with that. So here's just uh, an example of why, this is like a standard example, so I've made a, oops, hang on, what happened here? Uh, and so I've got a data store, and basically it's got um, basically a bunch of letters in it, and what I'm going to do is I've got a, I want to count up the number of occurrences of each of these these, these, these letters. And I can do that with this map reduce. So basically this is the map. So this, this produces a map where I'm binding the letter to the number one, and then I'm going to apply a reduce function which basically just totals all of the, uh, you know, the, the length. And so this, this is like counting occurrences. Um, slightly, you know, sort of contrived. Okay. Now, next concept is I'm going to do something like uh, merging. So this is like in SQL, this is called a join. So I've got two tables and there's, there's one table and here's 
another data store. Two. Now what I want to do is I'm going to do a merge of these two data stores and there they are and I want to merge them on the building ID. So I do that and it produces another you know, another, another data store where it's, it's merged all of these. So this is a way of combining, com, com, you know, combining the data. And then I could say, on that result, I could say count all of the buildings that have a floor count greater than 100. So this is just a, but very similar to SQL. And in fact, we've implemented a bunch of similar, you know, sort of joins and left joins and right joins. And what happens if, you know, it's present in one and not in the other. So, so we have, um, you know, some, some useful things here. Now here's, here's an example of a, it came from the uh, Wolfram uh, corporate analysis function and why this sort of thing is, is useful. So I've got two, um, I've got a definition for something that I need to clear. Um, uh, D. Yeah, it's probably D. Uh, let's try this again. There we go. That's, that sounds good. So I've got... I'm not quite sure why that's... Oh, right. I haven't completely... Just a little bit of code to do. Right. So here's, here's one of these tables. And I've basically got a set of letters, an account, and what I want to do is I want to do some sort of, I'm going to do a merge, and so the two tables have the same schema, they have the same column structure, and so what I'm going to do when I do the merge is I'm going to remap the columns, so one's going to be called left and the other's going to be called right, and so basically for each letter, the, the, you know, the letter A in the first column the count was 74, and in the second column, the count was 71. And now I'm going to do a data store map, and I'm going to introduce a new column that's the difference of, of these two. So, so I do that, and I've you know, generated this sort of delta thing. So that's, that's quite simple to sort of program up that, that sort of thing. So, you know, and that's actually the corporate analysis group in Wolfram Research had a specialized function to do this, but with, with this tool, they can replace that with with a fairly you know, small, amount of, uh, small amount of coding. Maybe I might skip over. That's something that's a bit more like um, SQL. Right, now, so the, the data store that I showed you there, the data is actually present, literally present, in the data store. But here's a, another type of data store, and, and this is one where the data is not literally in the, in the expression. The data store is actually stored in an SQL database. So here's, um, you know, so I can take, say, something like, you know, the, the authors. So if I look at um, authors, then, then you can see here, so it's, it's a table, but it's got an SQL connection inside of it. So if I do stuff like I convert it to normal, it just pulls the data out of the, the database. But many of the other commands, so here I'm going to do a, like a grid. And this is, this is going to the database, doing an SQL operation, and you know, pu pulling things back. Actually, there it's just pulling all the data back into. Well, here I'm doing um, extracting for, you know, all rows. I want the phone, you know, the, the sort of phone column. Um, here I'm going to do a, a select. So this is actually, this is implemented to use, this gets turned into a, an SQL select operation. But, but that all gets done sort of internally as far as the, you know, you just do a data store select and then the implementation goes and knows this is an SQL backed data store and, and does, the, does the computation. Now, here's another type of data store and this is one where the data is, is stored in a file. So this is stored in a, in, in, it's actually an HDF file, and so you can see the, so we actually wrote a little thing that this, this also returns a, a data store. So this is showing what data sets and the dimensions. So it's got one column that is um, the, you know, the age and the, the second, you know, this is the example that I showed before, and, but, but now the data is stored in a data file. And I can do, you know, same sorts of operations, normal, or extracting, exactly the same as before. Here I can do a, a select. Everything works as it did before, but instead in this time, it's, it's pulling the data out of this file. Now, th then we can go to the computing things, and um, 
So now I'm going to do th something like, say, the, the fold operation. And this, this, this works like now. But, but what's kind of interesting here is it's, it's only reading parts of the, memory, the, the data file at any one time. So there's like a big, big advantage in terms of memory because it doesn't have to have all the, all the data resident at any one time. So it's, it's doing sort of out of core um, file processing. And here's a, a sort of an example of a, of a, of a, of a regression function that's, that's um, you, you don't have to read all of that, but it's basically doing a fit of the data, but it's doing this in an out of core way. So, so if there was like gigabytes of data, this, this would still work, you see. So that's, that's, that's why, it's, why it's advantageous. And, now, and so the fit, if there were gigabytes of data, fit would not be able to work. In fact, fit probably wouldn't work if there were like, you know, 100 megabytes of data. It, it simply couldn't work. Whereas this, 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 this technique would, would work. Got to keep moving fast. Um, now, I'm going to switch to a different sort of data where it's, it's not rectangular tabular data, it's sort of hierarchical data. And that, that's where there's a lot of interest in, and in fact, allowing you to work with hierarchical data is, can be quite liberating and can, can avoid some of the complications that can come in in, in working with things in, in SQL. Um, so here I'm, I've created a sort of nested, it, it's when you look at this grid that it starts to see why this is useful. So we have at the top level of this uh, data, we have sort of author name and books, but each book has subfields that's kind of like the ISBN and the, the title. But, but the commands and things that we used before all work in some sort of similar way. Um, you know, I can sort of pull things out. And it has, here's kind of like some, so there's like some nested structure to, to the data here. So it's not rectangular, it's not, rec, it's not relational data, but, but, it, but, it's still, but it's still structured in some way. So here's, again, I can do some sort of, um, I've got a data store, and now I'm going to do a select to find all the rows. There are still rows, and um, so everything where the open price is greater than three. And that, that comes back, uh, right, so that's just going to be this, this one here. So Google opened on three, you know, at that, at that time. <coughs> Here's another thing that's, that's kind of interesting. So this is, I've, here I've got some, some relational data, so this is rectangular data, but, but you can see I've got some common, you know, like, like the author is, 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 you know, appears and the publisher appears, you know, mul multiple times. So what I want to do with this is I want to rewrite this data in a hierarchical way, and so we have a nice way of doing this with a thing that we call data store transform. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually giving this thing here is operating kind of like a schema. So I'm saying rewrite this data to conform to this, 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 you know, this, this new data. Well here, I'm going to redo that, but I'm going to say instead of having the uh, authors at the top, I want to have publishers at the top. So that's, 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 that's kind of a powerful thing to be able to do. Um, so with this, you know, another type of thing is I can get a, so here's some, this is another way of summarizing data. So I've kind of got some, some sales data here. So there's 2,000 rows in it, and it's, it's rectangular data. But I want to get a summary of this. And so, so a common way of getting a summary from this is to use a thing called a pivot table. And so we've written a thing called data store pivot table. And what this does is it returns also a data store. And I'm saying, show me a summary of the data where the, um, the actual entries here is going to be um, the number of, number of units. And I'm going to use total to sort of aggregate these. Um, and the, uh, the rows are going to be labeled by region. And the columns are going to be labeled by ship date. And so that's... That's kind of like a convenient way. This, this also uses a MapReduce uh, type, type of functionality. So anytime you're aggregating or introducing new rows, it's very likely you'll use the MapReduce function um, for this. Well, here's a different, uh, different thing. Uh, it's a bit hard to sort of oh, to shrink this a little bit. But what I'm saying here is I want to aggregate. I want to see the, the total. That's really a count. And then that's, that's um, the, you know, the, the total number of, uh, 
you know. So this, this is a, a useful way to summarize a, a large, you know, what's, what's really a, a large data set. Um, I've got some more stuff about pivot tables that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, here's just some, some more stuff on the schema. I'm going to have to wrap up soon. So this is kind of like a, so I can extract the schema. For example, when it's rectangular, the schema is obviously very simple. It's, it's, not, it's not nested. And I can extract schema and conform, check that things conform to the schema. Um, right. Here's, we've got this data store dimensions function. Again, when it's non-rectangular, it's a bit more um, challenging. Here's a way of, in a, you know, trying to extract length to get some idea of the structure of the data. And so here I'm, it, it, it's returning a data store with a length field that shows the, the length of, of, of different elements that are sort of buried more, more deeply. So that's kind of where we've got to. So this is a new way of working with data that that's, has all these possibilities of, of uh, out-of-core processing and working with non-rectangular data. So still, there's still a structure to this data. It has a schema, but it's, but it's non-rectangular. So I think I'm just about to run out of time. I can have a few questions. Um, so this is still very much under development. And so I showed two concepts. I showed data array, which is a new way of building data structures in Mathematica, and has some interesting possibilities for, for what's object, orient, object orientation in the sense of JavaScript. And, but it still keeps notions of immutability and, and interactivity. And the other thing that's built on top of data array is this thing called data store, which is a new way to work with, do computations and processing um, data in Mathematica. And it can work both for rectangular and not in rectangular data and has some interesting uh, possibilities for out of core uh, computation. So that means that you could work with much bigger, bigger data sets. So anyway, um, thanks very much. Thank you.